Reciprocal trig functions, why do we use them or why wouldn't we use them? I think that at schools, when you learn sine, cos and tan, you should learn set, cosec and cot at the same time. Because what happens is, it's almost like for a long time, if not forever, your brain thinks of these as second class trig functions, like sine, cos and tan are somehow better. And that if we have any sort of expression with sine, with set, cosec or cot, we must get rid of set, cosec, cot and change it back into sine, cos, tan. Why? Why is it that if we have a right angle triangle with three with an angle here and three sides, why is it that we do O over H? Why can't I do H over O? Why can't I do H over A? Why can't I do O over A or A over O? Why is, why is O over A more somehow important than A over O? It doesn't make any sense. So the reciprocal trig functions are just as, they, they make just as much sense as the original trig functions, sec theta, is instead of cosine, and I'll tell you how to remember these in a minute. So instead of cosine, which is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, sec theta is going to be the reciprocal, the reciprocal, okay, not the inverse. So sec theta is one over cos theta. Cosec theta is one over sine theta, and cot theta is one over tan theta. So they are the reciprocals, reciprocal trig functions. How do we remember? Look at the third letter third letter rule. So sec, third letter is a C, is 1 over cosine. And cosec, third letter is an S, 1 over sine. And cot, third letter is a T, 1 over tan. Okay, now very important, you might only do this at the beginning, but it's worth pointing out, sec theta is not 1 over cos theta. That makes no sense at all. It makes no sense. No, 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 no. It doesn't make sense. You can't have one over cos, theta. So don't think of sec as one over cos, even though we say that all the time. Sec theta is one over cos theta. One over cos theta, not one over cos theta. That doesn't make any sense, okay? And the other thing is we use one over, we use the notation in maths to the power of minus one. So x to the minus one is one over x. So that means that we would say, okay, so in that case, one over cos theta must be cos theta to the minus one. Mm, that's true, but we write cos, cos theta squared, we move it here, don't we? The little squared. So that must be the same as cos to the minus one theta. And this would make complete sense. That argument makes complete sense. But this notation is used for the inverse, not the reciprocal. So these are the reasons why this is quite confusing. Partly, you're not introduced to them early enough. You need to get to learn to love them. Secondly, the notation is a little bit weird and you get muddled. You can get muddled at the beginning between the reciprocal and the inverse trig functions. And they're very, 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 very different. Okay. So this is no, no, no as well. This is the inverse. That's what we mean by that notation. So it's not the same. Right, if we're sketching the graphs, you just need to get used to these things, okay? You just need to use them. You need to not be obsessed with sine, cos, tan. You need to work with these just as much as you work with sine, cos, and tan. In terms of their graphs, if you have a trig function being positive, then the reciprocal will also be positive because one divided by a positive number is a positive number. One divided by a negative number is a negative number. One divided by naught is not defined, so we would have an asymptote. And similarly, one over something with an asymptote, one over infinity is naught. So we have this dual relationship between one having a zero and the other one having an asymptote. Nice special number one, if trig is one, one over one is also one. So they're the same. And that will help us to draw these graphs out. So we're going to draw sine, cos and tan first, and then we can draw their reciprocals. So sine does this. And there's pi, and there's 2 pi, and then this is 1, and this is minus 1. Oh, I could add that on here as well, couldn't I, actually? Didn't think of that. Minus 1, 1 over minus 1, minus 1. So it's the same. So here is sine x. Right, what would cosec x look like? Well, here is an important point. That's a 0. What happens when a trig function has a 0? the reciprocal trig function has an asymptote. So there's going to be an asymptote at x equals pi and another one at x equals 2 pi. 
So that's straight off the bat. I can put those on. Now, especially one and minus one. Here, sine is one. So cosec will also be one. Here, sine is minus one. So cosec will also be minus one. Now what happens? Well, this is positive. So this is all going to be positive here because between naught and pi, sine is positive. So cosec is positive. And what happens is, oh, we've got another asymptote here, haven't we, really? Because of this zero. We come down and then we go back up like that through there. And then here we come up and then we go back down the asymptote. And then we come down the asymptote and back up and up the asymptote and back down. Cosine, do, do, do. oh, that's not the best cosine ever, but it will do. There's two pi, there's pi. Goes from one to minus one. So let's go for the asymptotes first of all. If this is zero, this has asymptotes. Oh, I should give this its title, shouldn't I? <laughs> not tan, cot. So we've got an asymptote at pi by two. And we've got an asymptote at three pi by two. And here it's at one, so this will be at one. And here it's at minus one, so sec will be at minus one. And then it goes back up to one, so sec will be one. And it's gonna do exactly the same as the, the reciprocal of sine. It's gonna come up there, then be down at infinity and then back down to infinity. And then it's gonna come down from infinity here and then back up again like that. So just a shift over in the same way that cos is a shift over of sine. Lastly, cot. Um, so what does tan look like? Well, we've got an asymptote and then a zero, a zero asymptote, zero asymptote. So we're gonna have here, zeros and asymptotes, but in the other places. So we're gonna have an asymptote to start at x is naught. Then we're gonna have, instead of this x is pi by two asymptote, we'll have an x is pi by two zero. And then instead of a zero at pi, we'll have an asymptote at pi. And then instead of an asymptote at three pi by two, we'll have a zero at three pi by two. And instead of a zero at two pi, we'll have an asymptote at two pi. Where this is positive, this is positive. So it's gonna come down like this, and then go like that, and then it's gonna go like this, and then it's gonna go like that. And then this is two pi. And then what you're gonna be asked to do basically is translations and uh, the normal translations of graphs. So you would follow the journey of the X, work out what's happened to the parent graph. These are your parent graphs, or these if you're doing sign, these are your parent graphs for the reciprocal sign. And then you can move those around and reflect them in exactly the same way that you would any other function. These are lovely. Don't force everything into sine, cos and tan.